So what is observer pattern? So it basically allow us to define a subscription mechanism to notify multiple objects about any events that happen to the object they're observing. I got this image from this link and you can see here, we have a bunch of observers, right? Or audience, right? Who are trying to observe this object right here. And you can see this object right here is the publisher, which published the data and notify all the observers who subscribe to this publisher or to subscribe to this object right here. And you can see here, we have this pub sub publish. So one object publish and other objects objects subscribe to this data. So there are two way or two style or this observer pattern. One is push observer pattern and the other one is pull style observer pattern. And we're going to take a look at that in this video. So to understand the observer pattern, here is a problem in code. So you can see here, I have a data source class, which contains the value getter and setter. And if I want to be able to change the value in the data source, I also want to make sure that the values or the data inside the spreadsheet and chart will also change. Then in this case, I need to make sure that the spreadsheet and also charts are subscribed to the data source. Now to solve this problem, what we can do is we can use the observer pattern and this is what it looks like. So you can see here, I have a class called data source. And so this is the data source, the value, and we can be able to get, we can be able to set the value. And we also have add and remove observer. This is where we can be able to maintain who are subscribing to this object right here. And then what we can do is that if we set the value, right, every time when the value changes, we can be able to have this function called notify observers. And we iterate all the observers that we have and just update, right, or publish the value so that all the observers can be able to receive the published data. And here you can see this is the interface that we're communicating with. You can see this interface has a update function so that any other observers can be able to implement this interface and has this update function so that every time when this data source data, for example, set value changed, then we can be able to update our, our spreadsheet as well as our chart as well. So for the push style in the observer pattern, this is what it looks like. So you can see here, we have our concrete subject. So our concrete subject in this case is going to be our data source. And our subject is going to be like our class, which has some basic functionality. For example, add observer, remove observer and notify observer. And you can see here, if I want to have different value, for example, I want to have integer, for example, for data source, I want to have value that's type integer or list. I can have different type of data sources. So this is going to be our data source. And the observer, like I mentioned before, this is going to be our interface, right? It has the update function, but we basically have a value. So what this push style allows us to do is to push value to update all the observers. So you can see here inside of the notify observers, right? We pass in a value here so that if I want to update all the or publish data so that all the observers can be able to see it, I basically have to iterate all the observers and publish or update the data, right? So I passed a data or a value to the update function. And that's why you can see this is what we have here so that all the concrete observer can be able to receive this data once the data is published. So for the push style in the observer pattern, this is what it looks like. So you can see here, I have a class called subject and this class has add observer, remove observer, and also notify observers. And uh, you can see here, we have our data source, which inherit from the subject class. And you can see here, we have getter and setter. And if we want to set the value, right, we basically notify the observers with the current value. And what's going to happen is that it will basically push or update the changes to all these observers. And these observers are like scribing the changes. Changes. So we basically publish changes and these observers trying to subscribe the changes. And you can see here, the observer is going to be an interface, right? We have our update function, which takes the value and this will basically update the observer value, right? So you can see here, we have our class. You can see we have our spreadsheet, we have our charts, which implements this interface. And you can see that once we update the value, we we'll also can be able to update its server's value as well. So this is very similar to, if you see my, like my old video about Angular RxJS, it's very similar to that, right? In RxJS, we have our subject, right, or our observable, and uh, we can be able to publish the value so that any components that subscribe to this observable can be able to receive the published data. Now, the other style is the pull style observer pattern. Now, basically what this style allows us to do is to not passing any data inside of the update function, but rather having a dependency for the concrete observer to have a dependency on the concrete subject. So what I can do is I can basically create an instance of these concrete subject and pass that in in the concrete observer so that basically the update function is kind of like a notifier, right? Which means that, hey, we are basically notify all the observers that the concrete subject's value change so that all you have to do is to update the current data inside of the concrete observer. And let me show you that in code in the example. 
Now for the pool style in the observable pattern, this is what it looks like. So you can see here, I have an observable subject. So I still have the add observer and the remove observer. But here you can see I have notify observers. Now for the notify observers, notice that here I don't pass in any values. So for this update function, you can see I don't pass in any value. But what I did here is I created a constructor, basically takes data source. In this case, once it takes the data source, we can be able to say data source the value. So we can see that we've tried to call the update function to to alert that we should get the most up-to-date value from the data source and we already have that inside of our constructor right we define uh, what is data source already inside of the constructor and same thing for chart as well so you can see here basically what happens is that for a data source if i want to set a value this will also notify the observers and here you can see we basically iterate all those observers and call the update function